Welcome everyone. If you're here for the BeagleBone Black getting started with talk, come on over. If you're not sure what the BeagleBone Black is, come on over. Especially you. This talk is meant to be a very cursory introduction. I'm Dave. I'm from Make. I'm uh, one of the technical editors. And one of my real passions is small embedded electronic boards that run Linux. Kind of a very specific thing, but what's great about the Make community is it's not all that specific anymore. There are tons of boards. The board I'm going to talk about is the BeagleBone Black. It's a very, very powerful uh, single board computer. I'm showing you Boris right now. Boris is, of course, a beagle, if you know anything about dogs. And he is the mascot. Now, Boris is actually five years old. And that's not using any dog years. That's five human years. We had a birthday party for him. And so this board right here that I'm talking, this is what a BeagleBone Black looks like. You'll see it in the background above the cake. Uh, it was a good cake. Uh, the BeagleBone had Beagle boards, which is kind of confusing. So Beagle boards were older. Like, what's helpful is they were square, square PCBs, where the Beagle bones are rounded. And they were rounded for a reason. If it looks like a familiar form factor, it actually can fit inside an Eltoids tin which is kind of handy for carrying it around. I do that when I travel a lot because I don't want to crash, uh, crash the electronics and damage them. Anyway, so what is a Beagle? A Beagle breaks down into a lot of technical things. I'll give just an overview. It's a one gigahertz ARM processor. So that's a lot of power. That's way more power than I ever had in my first computer. It packs 512 megabytes of RAM. And that allows you, that, that threshold allows you to run Linux, but it also allows you to run Android. You can run Android on this board, which for some people is a very, very cool option. You can also run FreeBSD, but that's out of the getting started. You can also run Windows CE, but you know, who, who knows if you want to do that? But you know, options. Options are good. So here's more of a breakout what the board is. You can see labeled, there's a, a 10, 100 Ethernet. There's a, there's a standard USB micro on this. And that's how I'm powering it. So all I'm doing to power this is plugging it into my, my laptop. And this is important because not only does it supply power to my board, but it also allows me for a way to interface with the board. So we'll, we'll get more on that in a little, little bit. Now, this screen looks, looks a bit frightening, right? A little, not like this should be in the getting started with talk. But it's important because when you're dealing with, with these boards, you want to know how much you can grow. And one of the things that holds back growth in learning about boards and about engineering is whether or not the hardware is open. So you're pro how many of you are familiar with open software? Okay. So it's basically the same idea, but with hardware. Are you, have you, anyone familiar with open hardware? OK, so right, a lot less of you. And it's more of a recent thing. And so I won't go into the specifics, but the hardware is open. So this schematic, I didn't sign any, any non-disclosure agreement. I just downloaded it from the site. Pretty cool, right? Pretty cool if you want to get into it. Pretty scary if you don't. You don't need to. So this is a screenshot of of the interface on my board. And I'm going to break out of the power of the slideshow here. And what I'm going to do is you see this boot, uh, the little boot folder. That's actually the Beagle. So I'm going to double click on this. And I am going to run the README. So what the README did was the README was an HTML document, right? So a web page, basically. So I'm in a browser. Every, com every laptop you have probably has a browser, right? And you see that there, there are two green. There's step one and step two. Step one is plug in Beagle. Well, you see I've done that over the USB. Step two is install drivers. I did that ahead of time because, well, I didn't want to have a presentation disaster. Step three, browse to the server. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click, click here to launch. If you're not familiar, this is a private IP address. And again, I'm not connected to the internet. I'm only connected over this USB cable. So I'll click there. This page is being served up from this board. So this board is providing all the information to my browser. You can see that my board is connected. Then I can jump into getting, getting right into using the board. So I can run example code. I can find out information about my board. Whoa, hey. <laughs> that wasn't the board, but good timing, right? So. 
if if you have uh, if you have some experience coding, there's an IDE. So I'm going to jump back to my slideshow very quickly here. Let's see, or attempt to. And of course, it disappeared. So, all right. So this is the interface. This is not in my browser now. This is in my bad power. Well, my bad image uh, open doc actually. So this is Boris again, but what, what's with Boris's outfit? You notice the cape, right? So how many of you are familiar with Arduinos? Let's hands. Okay, so you, you all know what, uh, what the add-on boards for Arduinos are called, right? They're called shields, right? So rather than follow the same uh, nomenclature as Arduino, it followed the same spirit. So add-on boards that sit atop the input and output rails on a Beagle are called capes. So that's why Boris is wearing a cape here, right? Keep it simple, break it down with images, and it's fun, too. I don't know which Boris I like better, though. The cape's pretty cool. So here's another screenshot. And this is, again, of my browser, a screenshot of the browser. You can see the tabs. Uh, and, and this is the first experience you, when you log into the IDE. And the way you access the IDE is you go the same way. You, you would open it by accessing the web server that's on the board. And it'll come up, and it'll walk you through. And you can start typing code in a real IDE. So it uses an IDE called Cloud9. If you're not familiar with it, no big deal. It's just an IDE, a development environment that runs in your browser. Pretty cool, right? Everything's contained. And again, the only thing that's connected is this USB wire, right? So best of all, it comes with the board. So everything you need to run, hey, again, right? <laughs> Excitement about that. Everything you need to run the board comes in the box. You don't need to buy other stuff. You know, we assume you, I assume you all have computers, right? Yeah. If not, uh, you, could, you could do something else, some other option. But I am, I am rocking right out of the box, and all of the stuff I'm showing you is only stuff you, it's all stuff you can do out of the box. I think it's important to differentiate between, you know, boards that take a, while, take a lot of hunting for peripherals and adding stuff, and just stuff that works right away, right? We all like, right? We all like Apple stuff because it just works. So the Beagle just works. So I, uh, this is my contact info. You're welcome to contact me. Come up and talk with me. I'm happy to talk about the Beagle. If you want to see more advanced stuff, the, uh, the Beagle Bone, there's Drew Fustini. He's, uh, he's helping man the Beagle, Beagle Bone booth. He's got great stickers, so you could get a sticker like the one on my laptop. And Matt Richardson, the gentleman who was talking right before me, he also is into all sorts of embedded boards, not just the Raspberry Pi. He wrote an excellent book that I, I, can't, recommend I can't recommend more highly. I, it's, just, it's really great. It'll help, help everyone get started with this. And it's called Getting Started with the Beagle Bone. And it actually covers the Beagle Bone Black and the Beagle Bone White, which is the older, uh, older Beagle Bone. But uh, are there any questions? Yeah, if you can uh, yell your question real loud and then I'll repeat it. That's a great question. So I spent most of my time talking about how simple it is and great that I run it in the browser. Well, you're right. That's convenient for when you're on the go. You know, maybe you're in an airplane and you, for some reason you want to code on the Beagle. There is a micro HDMI, which first I've seen it, right? Normally your HDMI is big and fat and it's like the, you know, on the back of your TV or VCR. This is actually it right here. I'm going to jump back in my slides and we'll... Uh, We'll see. So you see micro HDMI right here at the bottom. And it, it kind of looks like a micro uh, USB, but you plug, uh, you plug the cable in, and it's, not, it's actually not an expensive cable. But I, what I wanted to do was really highlight how quickly and how, how powerfully you can get going just with out, an out-of-the-box experience. So there, the capes also add more features, but you can run, you can connect in a USB hub, or you can connect the keyboard, and it's a, it's a full Linux computer. Uh, so you can, you can run Debian, or you can run uh, something called Angstrom, which is more for embedded Linux engineers, so people who are designing embedded systems. I, it's, not, it's not the best for beginners. Debian's probably more preferable. Um, how many of you have used Ubuntu Linux? Okay, so Debian is actually what Ubuntu is based off of. So if you're familiar with, with Ubuntu, you're going to get uh, in Debian a little bit less of a polished graphical interface. But you know, when you're when you're dealing like a, with a board like this, 
you're not really looking for a huge multimedia experience with you know awesome HD graphics and all that. You're you're looking to learn you, you know use coding and especially with the Beagle, learning how to interface with the world. Right? You you have all these input and outputs. Right? I mean that's a ton. 46 on each side. So any uh, any other questions? Yeah, you're way back there. So I'll try. Yes. Uh, so there there are. There are, you can run Android on it, um, and it's at the minimum threshold to run Android with the, uh, with the memory at, at 512, but you can do it. There's an official image uh, for Sitara, which is the chip that the Beagle uses, that you can get from TI, but there's also a gentleman who's written a, a really excellent tutorial on how to uh, compile your own. Which you know, that might be for you because if you're asking about you know Android, you, you might be you might be of that uh, persuasion to compile. So yes, uh, any any other questions? Yeah, you're gonna have to really yell. I know, right? They timed it again. That's three. Really yell. That is a great question. So the, the question was, can an Arduino be combined with a Beagle? And the answer is yes. And I think we should talk about that more because I want to let the next person come up. But I do want to answer your question. The answer is yes. So if you want to hear about the, the longer answer, come on, see me on the side of the stage. But thank you very much.